Good day and welcome to Partick South Church online service. Thank you for joining us as we worship together the risen and ascended Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. I've got one intimation for you today and that is there's a trustees meeting on Tuesday the 17th of August 7.30pm in the church sanctuary. As a trustees meeting on Tuesday the 17th of August 7.30 p.m. in the church sanctuary. We've gathered to worship God. In John's Gospel, chapter 6, verse 51, it says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The bread is my flesh, and I will give for the life of the world. Let us pray. Lord God, you have the bread of life for the hungry. You have the living water for the thirsty. So we come to you today hungry and thirsty for your word. We come today hungry and thirsty to know and to desire your will. We come to love to love you with your unconditional love that you have for us. Help us today to be fed and to learn from you. Bread of life, complete sustainer, provider of all that we need, we come before you seeking you, believing and trusting in you so that we may never hunger and thirst again. Limitless God, thank you that we cannot contain you, that you are unfathomable, and always up to something, always up to something to excite us, to bring something new to us, to bless us and show us your way. So we come to worship and to adore you. And just when we think we've worked it all out, you surprise us again. Gracious God, we are truly blessed by you. Thank you that as we bow down humbly at your throne, we know that only you can satisfy our needs. Only you can give us a living bread that we need. So we pray today, Father, cut from us that old mouldy, stale, earthly bread that we have built our life upon. When we make wrong assumptions about others and judge the way they live, forget, forgive us and restore us. When we don't allow others to speak out and be the people you have called them to be, forgive us and restore us. When we cast judgments on a particular community or neighbourhood that are different from ours, forgive us and restore us. And Lord, in the silence of our hearts, hear our own personal prayers of confession. And in doing so, let us journey together towards a wholeness and healing, knowing that only God can sustain us and set us free. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer of confession. Giver and sustainer of life, through the power of the cross, we are a forgiven people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation chosen by you, you have called us out of the darkness into your marvellous light. So we thank you and we praise you, Lord God, that despite our assumptions and judgments and the way we sometimes treat others, that you never stop loving us, caring for us, and as a bread of life, you are always with us. We praise you that as we draw near to you, you quench our thirst and satisfy our hunger so that we may never hunger or thirst again. 
Thank you, Father, and equip us and resource us with everything that we need for this journey of life. And in doing so, we thank you and praise you as we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us sing together, All my hope in God is founded. Our reading today is taken from John chapter 6, verses 30 to 71. And it's a continuation of last week's reading and the day after the feeding of the 5,000. So let us hear the word of God. So they asked him, What sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, he said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus answered, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. All those the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of those he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. 
For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. At this the Jews there began to grumble about him, because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I came down from heaven? Stop grumbling among yourselves, Jesus answered. No one, one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard the Father and learned from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. He said this while teaching in a synagogue in Capernaum. On hearing it, many of his disciples said, This is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? Aware that his disciples were grumbling about this, Jesus said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? The Spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of spirit and life. Yet there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe and who would betray him. He went on to say, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled them. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. You do not want to leave too, do you? Jesus asked the twelve. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. Then Jesus replied, Have I not chosen you, the twelve? Yet one of you is a devil. He meant Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, who though one of the twelve, was later to betray him. Amen and praise be to God. Thank you, May. Let us pray. Father, open our hearts as only you can to receive the word you have for us today. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we come. Amen. 
How easy is it to offend you? If I were to criticise you, your weight, your hairstyle, your politics, your religion, your football team, your sports team, the books you read, how easy is it to offend you? In the passage that May has just read, and it's quite a lengthy passage, in verse 61, Jesus says to his disciples, Does this offend you? Does the teachings of Jesus offend you? Well, that's a backdrop to the theme of the reading we just heard there. Does Jesus offend you? In this section of John chapter 6 is where Jesus begins to make some very clear and troubling declarations as to whom he is to the thousands who were gathered in the crowd. You remember that the chapter opens up with Jesus doing miracles, multiplying loaves and fishes and healing people. He's drawn a large crowd, several thousand people. But Jesus knows that there was a hollowness to them being drawn to him. So he begins to say some very challenging things to the crowd that are very hard to hear. I am the bread of life, said Jesus. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. He goes on to say, no one can come to the Father except through me and I will raise them up on the last day. I wonder if you're someone of another faith or of no faith and happen to stumble across this sermon today and you hear those words, no one can come to the Father except through me. Would that offend you? Jesus also says, everyone who has heard the Father and learned from him will come to me No one has seen the Father except the one he sent. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors eat the manna from heaven and died. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. And of course, in verse 61, Does this offend you? I know if I'm happy to talk to some people who are from a different faith, Jewish, Muslim, Hindu, and many others, if I made these declarations about Jesus Christ, I think they would be offended because they believe that they have the way. But I believe Jesus is the only way. And so Jesus, by making these bold statements, splits the crowd into three groups. Disruptors, defectors, and disciples. And I'm going to boldly say that each one of us will fall into one of these three categories when we think about Jesus and our relationship with him. So firstly, they're up disruptors. As the people gathered before Jesus, he began to challenge them. And you can just sense a change in the attitude of some of these people. Verse 41, the Jews began to grumble. Verse 52, the Jews began to argue. These same Jews the day before, were celebrating and partying as Jesus fed their bellies to the full. However, he now offers to fill their soul. But to do that, he tells them some truths. That they have to face the sin in their lives. They have to ultimately turn back to God. And the only way to do that was through him. Through his flesh and through his blood. 
And you can just hear the crowd murmuring or grumbling. You know, Jesus, we were kind of having a good time. There were miracles, fun, loads of food. There was a party and a lively atmosphere. And now you're saying this stuff, it's, it's so hard to hear, hard to listen to, hard to apply to our lives. And look, Jesus, you're losing your crowd. The thousands upon thousands who came to follow you are starting to thin down. Some of them are leaving. And I'm thinking about leaving myself. Jesus, you've kind of ruined it for us. All we wanted was a meal ticket and the entertainment. We were happy without all this God stuff. And now you've spoiled it. And many have left. Friends, in society then and in society today, there are many who would love nothing more than to disturb and disrupt the church. To soften our message so that it's palatable for them to swallow. And I think this is one of our biggest stumbling blocks in the church today. We don't want to offend. We want to be liked. We want to be loved. We want to be cherished. And maybe they are good things and they are good things. But it's not the Jesus way. Because we read in this passage that Jesus offended them. Because he could sense the crowd, sense the disciples. He knew what he was saying really got to them. But Jesus never softened his message. He was pretty clear on what it meant to be a disciple and a follower of him. It was pretty clear what you had to do to end your salvation. He was honest, he was truthful, and he never apologised for his message. And some of the folk didn't like that. And they left, grumbling and arguing as they went. And that's probably part of the problem that we have today in the church. We're too busy trying to count our numbers in. Trying to get, if you forgive the phrase, more bums and seats. We're trying to soften our mess so more will come. But Jesus had tens of thousands before him. And what did he do? He thinned the crowd to get to those who really believed, to those who were really willing to go. And that meant offending some people. The crowd were well aware that Jesus had claimed to be the very life and the mind of God now come to earth. And their difficulty was accepting that truth with all its implications. And to this day, many refuse Christianity, many refuse Christ, not because he puzzles their intellect, but because he challenges their lives. And when you challenge someone's life, they will often try to disrupt or disturb yours. Friends, when that happens, Please don't soften the message. Just be honest and be truthful with those who want to disturb and destruct. Then there's another group that day, and we read about them towards the end of the passage, the defectors, verses 60 and 61. On hearing it, many of his disciples said, this is a hard teaching, who can accept it? Aware that his disciples were grumbling about this, Jesus said to them, Does this offend you? Unfortunately, there were some disciples of Jesus out with the twelve who followed Jesus, enjoyed his company, enjoyed hanging out with him. It was great to be part of the crowd. But there was a problem. Jesus was now moving his teaching and had commitment required to follow him to a new level. It's easy to follow a leader when everything goes well. But when you're asked to give up your life, 
to follow them, to give up your family to follow them, to put Jesus front and centre of your life, to face persecution in society, to walk the way of the cross of Calvary. Some people are just not prepared to do it. They claim to be a Christian because they like all the easy stuff but they're not willing to pay the price. Friends, they are not only deceiving themselves, but they're also deceiving Jesus. So they defected. Some turn back to their old ways, to their old ways of grumbling and arguing along with the other Jews. And they walked with Jesus no more. And they drifted away for many reasons. Some quite clearly saw where Jesus was heading. It wasn't possible to challenge the authorities as he was doing and get away with it. He was heading for disaster and they were getting out just in time. You can maybe call them fair weather followers. It's been said that the test of an army is how it fights when it's tired. Well today I think the church is tired. And we have a choice to either fight as an army or to give up and be defeated. I believe Jesus calls us to fight, not to soften our message, not to make it palatable for people to eat, but to be truthful because that's what an army does, it fights for its leader. Those who drifted away would have been stuck by Jesus as long as his career was on the upward. He would move forward with them together when things were looking good. But then the cross comes and the shadow comes and things are different when it's difficult. So they left him. Verse 66 From this time many turned back and no longer followed him. Then finally we have the disciples. Verses 67 to 69. You do not want to leave too, do you? Jesus asked the twelve. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. Jesus turns to the twelve and asks them a very difficult question. Do you want to leave? And I wonder if that's the same question we face today. Not whether Jesus offends us, but do we want to leave? Because today, unlike those in the first century walking with Jesus, we know the cost. We know what it takes to follow. And Jesus says, do you want to leave? But of course, as we also read, the twelve don't leave, but they stay. Jesus is saying to them and to us today, right guy, now, now's the day, now's the time. What is your commitment? Are you coming with me? Or do you want to hightail it like the other folks? And one of the disciples, Peter, speaks up. Lord, to whom? Shall we go? You see, Peter's loyalty is not based on philosophy or a theory, but it's based on a relationship, a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And while Peter is often the most criticised of the disciples, his response to Jesus' hard teaching illustrates genuine belief. He didn't pretend to understand everything that Jesus taught, yet he held on to his Lord. He said in effect, Lord, there's no other choice, we have no other option. You have the words of eternal life, even if we don't understand it fully. Peter got the order in the right way. Belief becomes before understanding. Belief like this is supernatural and it will persevere until the ends of the day. 
So today I ask you, don't wait for every question to be answered because it won't happen. I've been a minister for nearly 11 years now and a Christian for about 20 and I don't have all the answers. Don't delay trusting and believing in Jesus Christ because you can't resolve every theological conundrum. Again, as a Christian, I don't have all the answers. For me, every day is a school day. Every day is a day to learn something new and exciting about Jesus. But God, Jesus, they have called us to believe and to trust in him in faith. In time, God will unravel all the mysteries as you walk through life with him and his son and his spirit. And then when you stand in God's presence one day, when you stand in front of the very bread of life, Jesus Christ, all will be made clear. But I do wonder, how will you stand there as a disruptor, a defector, or as a disciple? Let us pray. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Friends, we each face a choice on how we will respond. So how will you respond? Does Jesus offend you? Will you be a disruptor, a defector, or a disciple? Wherever you may be in the world right at this moment, Jesus is standing right in front of you. He's there beside you. And he's asking you, do you want to leave? Or do you want to stay and be a disciple and come on this journey with me? Well, why not tell him your decision? I have made mines. I am comfortable with my choice. But what about you? Are you choosing to be a disruptor, a defector, or a disciple? Knowing what being a disciple means. Why don't you think about that for a few seconds? And let Jesus know what you've decided. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to listen to a song called We Turn to God When We Are Sorely Pressed. And it's to the tune Abide with me.
Let us pray. Gracious God, provider and sustainer, Lord Jesus, the bread of life, Holy Spirit, our companion on this journey, we thank you, Father, Son and Spirit, that we have the opportunity to repay your generosity by giving of our time, talent and wealth for the advancement of your kingdom. And today we ask you, Lord Jesus, the bread of life, bless all who have given from their wealth and bless all who have given from their poverty. Lord, this week as we pray for other people, let his friends ask God to help us to see them from his perspective rather than making our own assumptions. Jesus, bread of life, help us to see others as your children, cherished by you. Today, Father, we lift up to you our world leaders. It is so easy to be critical of them, to believe what we read in the papers or in social media, rather than seeing them as people, just like us, with needs, just like us. In an increasingly unstable world, we ask you to give them wisdom and integrity. Help them to put the needs of their country before their own desires. And we pause for a moment of silence now as we try to imagine what it must be to like to walk in their shoes. Jesus, bread of life, help us to see others as you see them, as precious children of God, cherished by you, loved by you. We pray for countries at war or suffering long periods of unrest, particularly Afghanistan and those in the Middle East. It's so easy for people to take sides and fight rather than trying to see the world from your perspective. We pray that a new desire to love and treasure others may sweep through this planet, bringing in a new reign of peace. Lord Jesus, bread of life, help us to see all children, all people, as God's children, cherished and loved by you. Here in the UK, we thank you for the example given to us by the Queen and we continue to uphold her in our prayers. We ask that you will give her comfort as she mourns the death of Prince Philip and her grandchildren are focus of so much public scrutiny. We pray for our government as the problems of COVID-19 continue to beset us all. Help us not to be critical of the rules and regulations and the people who make them but instead to see them as your children and help us to do our best to keep others safe as they try and keep us safe. Jesus, bread of life, we pray for our communities and all who live and serve in them we thank you for those who sweep our streets, empty our bins, clean our shops and workplaces, who tend in the hospitals and who look after your church. We pray for your strength and reassurance for our overstretched NHS and for our tired teachers trying to have a summer break. We pray for those who are unemployed and those in zero hour contracts struggling to meet ends meet. We pray, Father, for your church. May we find ways to help the disadvantaged in our communities in the short term, while praying that our government may have the courage to find long-term solutions. Jesus, 
Jesus, bread of life. We come before you, Lord, in sorrow that so many people in our world are abused or neglected because of their race, colour or gender. We ask your forgiveness for any part we have played in preventing your world from being a place of harmony and stability. We lift up to you the millions of refugees fleeing unsafe homes. We pray for the migrants trying to cross the channel. And we pray too for those who exploit them. We ask you to give us strength and courage to all those who are fighting for justice in our world. We ask you to give us the eyes to see everyone as made in your image with equal worth. Finally, Jesus, bread of life, we commit to you those who live around us. We picture them in our minds now as we bring them to you for a blessing. Our friends, our neighbours, the people who walk their dogs past our houses, those we say hi to in the street or the station or subway, on the bus, but we don't know their names. We pray for those who live behind closed doors that we never see, those we used to spend time with who for whatever reason we don't meet anymore. And we pray too for those whom we avoid. Heavenly Father, in these few moments of the stillness and silence of wherever we are, we bring before you our own personal prayers for others and for ourselves. And we ask you, Father, in Jesus' name, hear our prayer. Jesus, bread of life, help us to see others as you see them. Help us to serve one another because we are made in your image. Help us to bring your love to everyone we meet this week for we walk as disciples of Jesus Christ. And in his name we offer this prayer. Amen. Before we have the, the benediction and the grace, let us sing together, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah.
Let us pray. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Let us say the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen.